Good evening, everyone, and happy Thursday. Welcome back to the Ghost Biker Garage. I'm your host, the Ghost Biker, and I am uh, excited to be here. I hope you are too. I know last week we had some technical difficulties, had a great guest on, uh, had Preston Dennett, and uh, he was um, he, he filled us with a lot of great stories. And so we um, ended up getting kicked off. And so I appreciate you guys that hung with us. Uh, we did make it for the full hour, but after probably about um, maybe an hour and five minutes right on that nose, it kicked us off. I don't know if it was something we were talking about or what, but um, I ended up getting notification that there was an outage in the area. And uh, so we um, didn't get power or internet back here until uh, probably sometime in the middle of the night. So, um, so if you guys can let me know that you can hear me and see me okay, that would be great. Um, we are having a little technical difficulty with um, tonight's guest. Um, I've got, um, we were talking before, uh, before the show and he, he wasn't able to, um, get his mic to work. So we're trying to get that taken care of and uh, going to give him a little bit of time to get on here and um, uh, get things working. But in the meantime, I wanted to go ahead and come on and again, thank everyone for uh, bearing with us last week during the technical difficulties. It was the most bizarre thing because um, whenever it kicked me off, it kept Preston on. And then after probably about 10 minutes of trying to get back on, I couldn't actually shut the live down. So, um, so it went on for probably about 20 minutes of just black screen. You guys talked amongst yourselves and uh, was there when we came back, but uh, we are going to have Preston back at a later date in September to finish talking about uh, some of the things we were talking about. But in the meantime, I wanted to take just a few minutes and share um, this past weekend, we had the uh, Widow's Sons Autism Ride. It was the eighth annual ride. And I wanted to take just a few minutes to thank these guys that are here on the screen. They are with the Widow's Sons Masonic Lodge, uh, Cornbread, Bullfrog, and Jester. That's just three of the great guys that are with the um, riding group. And they invited me to be a part of this past weekend's event that was um, the money went to benefit the uh, special needs program in Scott County. And these guys, they raised, I want to make sure I get it right. They raised $1,455 that goes to the special needs program, which is an amazing program there that helps, you know, children with autism and, and uh, other different special needs. And so um, congrats to them thank them for uh, allowing me to be a part of it. And, um, you know, we did have a great ride. We actually ended up uh, getting some rain during the event. And uh, it was kind of scary riding back because there was there was so much rain. It was uh, literally a monsoon. I mean, cloud to ground lightning. Uh, it was it was pretty scary, but it ended up being a great event. Um, there was between 35 and 40 bikes. I hadn't heard the official count, but um, great turnout for uh, a Saturday here uh, in uh, mid-August. So again, definitely want to thank those guys for allowing me to be a part of that and thank everyone that came out and rode and supported this great cause. Um, I'm still waiting to uh, see if DC is able to get on here. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and, and uh, kill a few minutes while we're waiting for him to get on to see if we can get his uh, audio to working. If by some chance we're unable to get him on tonight, then we will definitely be sure to have him back on at a later date as well. A um, few other things. We uh, got some new brochures for the uh, historic Scott County Jail that uh, you're going to be seeing these in uh, your rest stops, chamber of commerces and other local businesses around uh, Northeast Tennessee. So we just got those today and um, we're very excited to be distributing those next week. The grand opening or the grand unlocking date is going to be on September 4th and it's going to run from noon until four. I know you guys have, have seen my posts about it on my personal page. If you've not gone and liked the historic Scott County Jail, go ahead and go over there and check that out because um, we just announced Mother Legacy Band. They're going to be playing. I uh, had them on the show a few months ago, 
and uh, they they did a personal concert for us here. And so they're going to be performing for a couple hours at the event on September 4th. Um, we've also got B&B ice cream. They're going to be there. Um, if you guys have never had a B&B ice cream's food truck, they make uh, homemade ice cream and homemade cobblers. And I don't know what they're going to be having specifically that day because I know food trucks they can change whatever they have on their their menu but i know she makes some really really good peach ice cream and uh, blackberry ice cream and peach cobbler and blackberry cobbler so uh, i know they've got a lot of different things to choose from and then also fat baby meats is going to be there and um man i'm getting hungry just thinking about all this but uh they're going to be having uh barbecue and uh hamburgers uh i know they actually uh had the food truck there uh, at, at the event this past weekend. And so they make a really good pasta salad. So, um, so we're looking forward to having all of these folks out, got a lot of, a lot more announcements we're going to be having leading up to that celebration. Uh, so there will be food and there will be music. There'll also be tours of the jail that you can take. And um, we're going to have our gift shop open. We've been working with a lot of different local artists, craftsmen, and authors that are going to be having items in our gift shop. And just a few of the items we're having, we've got several books that are going to be in there. Um, some uh, a, a guy that makes homemade knives. He's going to uh, to have some uh, homemade knives that he made specifically for the jail that kind of looks like uh, prison prison shanks. Um, and so we've got those for, we'll have those for sale. And then a lot of historic Scott County jail branded merchandise. So just want to take a few minutes to say hello to a few people over here in the chat room. Hey, Janet, Chris, Joanne, Joe, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, I'm looking here and I'm not seeing DC backstage just yet. Um, we will, uh, give him just a few more minutes, kill a little bit more time. Uh, he was um, trying some different things. The audio on his laptop wasn't working. So um, he was going in and he was going to um, try a different laptop on that. So let's give him just a few more minutes to see if he's able to get on because he's he's provided me with some great photos and great uh, evidence that he wants to specifically share the stories about. And so um, so we'll give him just a few minutes to See if he comes on here. Um, just want to say hello to Angela, Travis, Ronnie, Carrie. Thank you guys so much for uh, for tuning in. Um, like I said, we're just killing a little bit of time to see if uh, if DC can can make it on. Let me check the uh, calendar. I'll go ahead and take care of the announcements that we typically do at the end of the show. I'll go ahead and take care of that now, so that um, so that we're able to you know, like I said, kill a few minutes. Um, next week, I'm going to have uh, author Sin Dixon. She's going to be on the show. And then on into September, we will not have a show um, on the week, uh, the last week of, uh, or excuse me, the first week of September, because that's going to be leading up to the grand opening. Um, we won't have a ghost biker garage. We may do a live out there from the jail, but we won't be doing a, um, regularly scheduled ghost biker. And then um, I'm going to have Brandon Marsh from the uh, um, Brandon, Mar excuse me, Brandon Marsh and his new co-host from the Para Unity podcast. And then also we'll have, like I said, Preston Dennett. And all that leads up to the fourth season of Ghost Biker, which will be airing the uh, first weekend in October hopefully. <laughs> Got a lot going on. And so we're hoping that all of that ends up um, uh, coming through and everything. A lot to work on with opening this lo location and then also working on getting everything um, ready for this fourth season because we've got a lot of really cool episodes coming up. Um, big event that's going to be coming up on, let's see, let me get that calendar back up here. Um, the next big event that is coming up, other than other than the uh, jail grand opening, uh, we're going to be doing another haunted ride with Ghost Biker, and that's going to be on September 25th. We've not announced the uh, ride just yet, where that's going to start from, but we know it's going to end at the historic R.M. Brooks General Store 
for their uh, third annual bike night. So that's going to be on September 25th. So if you ride a motorcycle and you're in the uh, southern Kentucky, um, eastern North Carolina, southern Virginia, or east Tennessee area, and you want to join in on this bike ride, it is a free ride. And uh, it runs through some of the most beautiful, historic, and haunted uh, countryside here in East Tennessee. So we'll be announcing that. And the bike night at Brooks Store is always a ton of fun. So we're glad to be able to do that to do that for a second time this year. And then, as uh, Dr. Sumner mentioned over here, the first annual Las Cruces Paracon is going to be the first weekend in October, which is um, October, let's see, 2nd and 3rd. And we're going to be posting more information on that. I actually hope to have Vicki and um, Southwest Paranormal on to talk about that at some point, because we've got some great speakers there. I know Dr. Sumner from Soul Sisters Paranormal is going to be talking about paranormal tourism. Uh, I'm going to be doing a presentation on Ghost Biker and what we do. And then also um, I'm going to actually be doing a dual presentation with Leon Wilkes. And we're going to be talking about the Sunset Hill case that we both worked on and how, um, you know, how that kind of started from conception all the way to when we turned it over to him as a demonologist. And He's going to talk about religious demonology and everything. So we'll be doing those presentations there in Las Cruces, New Mexico, and a lot of other speakers that uh, definitely want to check out. So I know that um, I'm definitely interested and excited to uh, to be going to this first annual Paracon because it's going to be really cool to meet a lot of folks on the other side of the country that I don't get to uh, see or really talk to on a regular basis like we do over here. So, um, so I'm really looking forward to seeing them. And then um, just want to say hello, David Flowers. Thank you so much and uh, appreciate your congratulations. And yeah, Chris, we are extremely excited because um, we have done a whole lot there at the jail and got a whole lot left to do here over the next three weeks. So if, um, you know, we're still looking for items, we've had a lot of people donate and put a lot of really cool items on loan for the museum. It is a law enforcement and true crime and punishment museum that we're having there. And so um, it's mostly focused on Scott County, but we do cover um, statewide Tennessee and then also uh, national stories and stuff. So if anyone has any items that they would like to donate or put on loan to the museum, please feel free to reach out to us um, and we'll get some paperwork together for you. And, um, you know, one thing we're really looking for is uh, patches. Um, whoops, it looks like maybe DC is about to come on here. Um, but we're really looking for patches and hopefully... Um, you know, we can get some patches from all around the country that we can put up on our uh, presentation board there. Um, let me see if I can get DC on here. See if we can get this to working. Let's see. Um, while we're waiting for him to pull up here. Um, like I said, thank everyone that has donated. And then also, uh, if you are an artist or a craftsman or an author that would be interested in uh, selling any of your gifts at our gift shop, please reach out to us because um, we are definitely, you know, looking for that. Uh, for some reason, this is still spinning. Let me remove and see if this will let him... You know, we're uh, we're all paranormal investigators here, so I know a lot of us are used to uh, technical difficulties. I'm not really sure um, what's going on tonight. I uh, know kind of what happened last week with the uh, uh, outage, but we will definitely see. Um, looking over here in uh, the comments, good evening, Nancy. Hey, Mark Davis. Hi, Peppy. Michelle Millions. Um, Chris says, I'll see what my family has. The first sheriff in Scott County was my great time six grandpa, John Lou Allen. Yeah. Um, we're definitely, and that's another thing that we're really looking for on here is we're looking for, uh, stories and, uh, cause I know, you know, there's so much pride in Scott County and so much pride from 
you know, the, from a history standpoint, and a lot of family has uh, grew up and spent time in that jail. So, so we're looking for those stories and everything. Um, let's see. And as Dr. Sumner said, any law enforcement patches we want, we want on our wall. So, hey, Nando, thank you so much. We got Nando here from, from across the pond. Thank you from uh, Portal to the Paranormal. Thank you so much for tuning in. And like I said, um, we are having technical difficulties with my guest. Um, I'm not sure why it's not letting him come on. Um, this is this is so strange. We can't have technical difficulty two weeks in a row. <laughs> So, um, so yeah, anyways, thank you. Thank you all so much for bearing with us and hopefully we can get him on here, here in a few minutes. Um, we'll just have to, uh, see, um, Ronnie, thank you so much. Um, if, yes, if you've got some patches from Virginia, we would, we would love to put those up. Um, we've got a, uh, flag that we're putting these patches on and our goal is if we can get patches from all over the country that would um that we can sp display there in the jail that would just be an awesome thing so um well it looks like it looks like it kicked dc off um hmm. uh let's see uh, we've got some people that are going to check another life to see if they're having issues. Um, thanks, Nancy. We appreciate that. Uh, like I said, you know, I'll, I'll talk a few minutes about about last week. Um, there, are, you know, it's it's really interesting because there are a couple different topics that I've covered on the show. We typically don't have, and I don't want to knock on wood, don't want to jinx myself, but we. Oh, let's see. We've got DC here. Uh, hey, Miranda, something is trying to keep me from coming on. LOL. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think I jinxed it last week whenever uh, when we got kicked off. Um, go ahead and, and try again, DC, and see if you're able to uh, uh, do that. Um, well, <laughs> yeah, because um, there's I know there's several topics and, and I won't mention those topics right now because I don't want to get kicked off myself. But there are several topics haven't really had technical difficulties, but uh, when I've either had certain guests on or talked about certain topics, even off air, you know, because we will talk sometimes behind um, after the after we go off live, we'll sit and talk a little bit. Um, we've been kicked off before talking about certain things. And so uh, it's always kind of interesting. And I'm always interested to hear from some of these other podcasters to see if uh, if they ever have any issues or anything of that nature with uh, certain topics that they have. Uh, you know, if you all watched early on, um, there was a specific guest that I was trying to have on at one time to talk about a certain topic. And every time we tried to do something, I tried four different times to get him on and there was always something. So, um, so I guess we'll see if, uh, if we can get DC on here, uh, so I'll just go to the comments now. Uh, that was going to be my next question. Were you representing law enforcement from all over the country? And um, yes, as, uh, as Dr. Sumner says here, um, we are going to have a law, enforcement, a law enforcement appreciation wall. Any and all patches from around the country are welcome to be on our wall. We, um, like I said, we are covering the, um, the local area because there are a lot of great stories that are associated with the jail and local crime and uh, our local true crime and punishment. But um, we've we've just had such a great response from all over Tennessee that we thought, you know, we're, we're going to split it into three different sections and try to do. Um, oh, I think we got D.C., but we're going to try to do um, local Tennessee and then also national. So let's see if we got D.C. on. Let's see if we've got some sound. Hey, DC. Hey, can you hear me? Oh my gosh, I can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> so awesome. I ended up I ended up going through two two different laptops. I don't know what the deal was. Finally, I got fed up and just took my cell phone and got on that way. So, hey, whatever works, right? 
Hey, right. <laughs> hey, that's that, you know, that's how it is with paranormal investigating. We have these tef- technical difficulties and then we go and we do what we got to do to make it work. So I'm going to actually go yeah, ahead. I, um, I am. The... No, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say I'm getting oh, no, a little no, echo. Should... So I may mute uh, you whenever I'm talking just so there's no mm-hmm. feedback. But, but I want to go ahead and actually introduce you. I didn't get to do that. Okay. And so, yeah. Um, yeah, so like I said a little bit earlier, you know, my guest has some amazing stories. He is uh, the host of the Paranormal Podcast, Hauntingly Yours, a podcast for the paranormal and a ghost tour guide for the original ghost tour in Williamsburg, Virginia. In addition to that, he's the founder and lead paranormal investigator of Shadow Walkers Paranormal with over 14 years of experience in the field. DC brings some truly unique stories to the table and not just stories from history, but stories from those that history has chose to leave behind. Welcome, DC. Thank you. I'm glad you were able to make it on. <laughs> yes, me too. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> and we've got yeah. a lot of folks here. We've, we've got quite a few folks from Virginia over here. Oh, that's and, awesome. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, um, hey, Adam and Ronnie. Um, I actually got to meet those guys over at St. Albans. That was the first time. I you know, always saw them in Facebook, but uh, never got to meet them in person. So, um, so let's go ahead and why don't you tell us, and, and again, we've got some pictures and got some things that um, we're going to share. And so if you'll just kind of guide me whenever um, we're going to pull that up, um, then I'll do that. But if you want to go mm-hmm. ahead and, and talk about how you got started on your paranormal journey and what you do, that would be great. Uh, how do I make a long story very short? Um, so for me, it all started when my grandfather passed away when I was 13 years old. Um, he and I were extremely close. And I remember a couple of days after he died, I woke up in a dream and I was in this very bright place. Um, the, it was a, a very long, expansive room and it was you know, it seemed like it went on forever, but here I am in this dream and I could sense that it was more than a dream, but I mm-hmm. couldn't quite put a finger on it. And I started walking along exploring. And after a couple of minutes, I heard somebody all the way at the other end call out to me. And I went all the way to the end of the room. And as soon as I got there, just a couple of feet from me, um, there was this very large white throne. And on that throne was my grandfather wearing a white suit and he was very youthful looking and he had a big smile on his face and i said papa what are you doing here he said forget all that come come here i need to talk to you and i went over and he i didn't get a chance to tell you goodbye i just wanted you to know how much i love you and i hope you have a nice life and i woke up in tears feeling like i was still there in that place and then i realized oh crap okay wait was this a dream or did he come and actually visit me? But it left me with a lot of questions and I started telling my mom, I, I, you know, I told the local reverend at my church and nobody believed me. They just said, you're a 13 year old kid, you're grieving. You don't know how to accept, you know, losing somebody that you were so close with. And then I sat down and I talked with my grandmother about it. And she said, "Hmm, you know, that's funny because the last person your grandfather asked about before he died was you. Wow. He asked me, had I talked to you or seen you during the day? And so her and I just kind of put two and two together. And she said, you know what, honey, if nobody believes you, I believe you. He came back to see you. Um, So, yeah, that kind of put me on the path um, to, you know, studying the paranormal and, you know, seeking answers to these questions that I had, you know, can deceased family members and others come back to you? And um, from there, I ended up exploring this place called Old House Woods, uh, which is about 10 minutes from my parents' place, Um, 60 acre patch of woods haunted by pirates and British redcoats and headless animals. Uh, Basically, if you take everything that Edgar Allan Poe and Robert Louis Stevenson wrote about, throw it in a blender, that would be the byproduct. (laughs) 
wow. here in this one location. Yeah. And I mean, it's it's a great place. You can spend hours out there um, investigating. Unfortunately, it is private property, so you can't go walking into the woods without permission. But you can mm -hmm. walk down the the road that goes through you know, the road, uh, the woods, and then the wood on the outskirts. Uh, excuse me, the road on the outskirts of the woods. Um, there's a lot there. Um, I my very first experience there. Um, myself and a friend were uh, attacked by a shadow figure that ended up transforming into an apparition of a 17th century pirate. Um, wow. That right there left a, it, it left a mark on me, you know what I mean? That I mm -hmm. knew that experience, I mean, I had to go find others like it and figure out yeah. why these types of things happen to people. Um, so I kept coming back to old house woods, looking for answers. And then I started finding other places within my hometown. Um, like there was this haunted nursing home that I spent a lot of time at investigating that had been abandoned since the 1970s. Um, just kind of connecting with, uh, former residents who had passed on, but were still attached to this place for whatever reason. And then as time went on, I started going outside of my hometown. Uh, and eventually I found myself in uh, Williamsburg. Um, I came to work for the Colonial Williamsburg Foundation as a uh, historical interpreter at first, um, working in the colonial gardens, uh, helping interpret 18th century gardening of all things. And wow. then one night, yeah, one night I found out they were holding um, auditions for ghost tour guides. And I went, oh, wow, you know, this is perfect. Um, I, I, I actually, I, I come from an acting background. Um, you know, I'm a theater major. I, I've been in, you know, Broadway productions. I've been, you know, in films, commercials. I mean, so I thought, you know, hey, combine this with my love of the paranormal, why not? And mm -hmm. little did I know I would be still doing it six years later. <laughs> That's awesome All, because I know yeah. that doesn't, open up that often yeah yeah um so i worked for colonial waynesburg for about um five years and then i decided to hang up my hat with them and then i joined uh the ranks of the original ghost tour uh which is virginia's oldest ghost tour company um all the while pursuing other paranormal endeavors, like starting my own paranormal investigation mm -hmm. team and starting a podcast and yeah, you know, very, yeah, very busy cool guy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, uh, Nando here says, what a great story to start your journey into the paranormal. And I have to absolutely agree with that because, um, you know, I know of several people that their paranormal journey started with um, a, a visit from a loved one who had passed away. Mm -hmm. And um, and then Ronnie says, um, yes, most privately owned or a lot of red tape to investigate the paranormal history there, but it's so beautiful. Um, yeah, do you, uh, do they, uh, where, do you investigate a lot of the uh, larger commercial locations or do you stick with more of the sort of local type um legends and, and history? Um, so primarily I stick to the the historic area, which is the, the outdoor living history museum where you've got um, all of your, you know, original buildings that date back to the 18th century. But I have done quite a bit of um, investigating outside the historic area, like um, for example, um, my team and I actually just uh, went to the Williamsburg Masonic Lodge uh, for the oh, very first nice. time. Yeah, we were the very first team to go in there. So that was very cool to have that experience. Um, you know, and I've done some other uh, locations, but I won't <laughs> delve too much into those um, just because I agree to certain things. So, yeah. I understand. And uh, I know uh, Dr. Sumner and I were on your show back in December and uh, she says she loves your podcast. And I know she and I have oh, talked you. 
extensively about, you know, some of the different shows and stuff we've been on. And your show was one of our favorites. And uh, we oh, really enjoyed chatting with you. Yeah. So you want to talk a little bit about about your show and um, um, sure. uh, and then a little bit about your team as well? Yeah. Um, so pretty much with my show, uh, Hauntingly Yours, I pretty much uh, once the coronavirus pandemic hit uh, last year in 2020, I had literally just come out of um, a ghost tour training class with the original ghost tour. And they were like, all right, Denny, you know, we're really excited to get you on the street. You know, you, you, you know this stuff. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, all right, let's do it. And then boom, oh wait, uh, we're not gonna be able to do anything for a few months. Mm. And I'm going, uh, you know. Um, so I was talking with some friends and they said, well, hey, you know, why don't you start a podcast? I mean, just take what you do on the streets and put it on a show. And I went, oh, wow, you know, that's a brilliant idea. Um, it'll help me keep my storytelling game strong. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's good stuff. Um, so before I know it, I just, I sat down, came up with a basic outline and I said, okay, what do I call it? You know, I'm telling stories, you know, ghost stories from across the world. And my mind went back to a book, one of the very first um, paranormal, like folklore type books I came across as a young man uh, called The Ghost of Tidewater by a gentleman named L.B. Taylor, who sadly passed on. Um, we're talking about a guy who worked for NASA, but ended up getting into the, the paranormal field, which I think is very interesting. He wrote mm -hmm. over 20, 20 books in his lifetime. But whenever you went to a book signing with him, he always signed his books, hauntingly yours, L.B. Taylor. And my brain went, that's what I'm calling my show. I, that's my homage to the man who, you know, pr pretty much inspired me um, to keep looking for answers. And it's very fitting at the same time, because, you know, I'm, I'm a paranormal investigator, but at the same time, I, I, am, a, I, I am a storyteller. So, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, there you go. Uh, so that picture right there is uh, Huska Castle um, in the Czech Republic. Um, one of my favorite ideal locations to investigate, um, said to be built on top of the gateway to hell. Um, which okay. that wow. Itself, yeah, that, that right there <laughs> in itself <laughs> sells anybody. It's like, oh, the gateway to hell, okay. Um, but, but yeah, basically these monks, um, you know, several hundred years ago, they found this giant hole in the ground that seemed like it went on forever and ever and ever they, they dropped things down in there they, they said there was no bottom to it and um so finally they said okay we need to build something on top of this um and that ended up happening mainly because they said weird things were happening at night um these humanoid winged creatures were coming up out of the hole and they were attacking wildlife on the landscape and they were going into town and sucking the blood out of locals and wow something <laughs> had to be done yeah um so they built huska castle um on top of it now i i wish i had you know a good hour to go into the history but um fascinating piece of history this was actually used by the nazis during World War II to carry out some of their more uh, unique experiments, uh, you know, such as trying to create a master race and all that fun stuff. Um, wow. So there, yeah, yeah, there's a lot of uh, bad juju there. <laughs> I can see <laughs> <Literally>. that. <laughs> that would be yeah. fascinating to investigate or even just to go and experience just the history in that place to see what the energy itself feels like. Oh, sure. Yeah, I've had uh, a couple of different conversations um, with the gentleman who runs uh, I mean, McGee's Ghost Tours out of there. And I mean, he's just a, a wealth of information. And some of the things that, you know, he and his people have seen while conducting tours there is absolutely terrifying. Um, I'm sure. But yeah, uh, all the same, it, it's high up on my list. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah. So I definitely recommend that you guys go check out and like his page, uh, Haunting, Hauntingly Yours podcast. And you've also got a, uh, a group page as well for it, correct? 
Yeah, um, that it was the Hauntly Yours Paranormal Lounge. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you guys definitely go check that out. Check out his podcast and check out his page. Um, look at, just looking at some of these different comments here. Um, I do suggest that, uh, uh, Nando reach out to you, um, and go on, uh, his podcast portal to the paranormal. Like I said, they're over in England and, um, uh, great group of people. I'm hoping to be able to meet that team when I'm over in England early next year. So, um, I'd, I'm, I'll give him your, uh, uh, contact information if, uh, if, uh, if you would like to be on his show. Um, yeah, absolutely. And, uh, and then Ronnie also says that LB Taylor was a great guy. He did a few of our events, love his books. So yeah, very yeah. cool. Um, very, very cool guy. I'm also going to pull up your, um, let's see, your Facebook page here for your group. You want to tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about your paranormal team? Yeah. So um, I, I guess long story short, I've been... Um, trying for the past couple of years to find a team uh, to join um, as a paranormal investigator, but, you know, either teams weren't looking or, you know, they just didn't feel like I was a good fit or for whatever reason. So um, back in February uh, of this year, I was um, talking with a friend of mine who's now on my team, uh, David, and he said, Denny, why don't you stop beating around the bush and just start your own team? And I went, wow, you know, it was like lightning struck my brain. And I said, <laughs> that's a fabulous idea. Um, so I reached out to a few different contacts, you know, experienced investigators who had their own teams, um, kind of got a feel for things, went on a few um, investigations with them. And then I said, okay, let's do it. Um, so I sat down, I, you know, I said, all right, I want this many people, um, you know, I want them to kind of have a uh, a, a nice mixture of different things that they can bring to the table from, you know, being a good researcher, you know, to being an empath or a sensitive, you know, anything like that. And then I came up with a name, uh, Shadow Walkers Paranormal, you know, it just came to me. And um, I said, okay, my team's mission is to help those that history chose to leave behind in the shadows. Um, hence the name Shadow Walkers, because we walk in the shadows. And I picked the six best people that I thought um, would uh, make a great team. And here we are. Um, you know, we we do a lot of stuff in Williamsburg. Um, I'm hoping we'll actually be involved in the um, world's uh, largest ghost hunt um, mm -hmm. coming up at the end of September um, nice. of Los Angeles. From the original ghost tour uh she was asking if my team would be interested in you know doing something special for that so i was like <laughs> very exciting um then you know we've um we've done the waynesburg masonic lodge um primarily we've investigated locations in virginia you know mm -hmm. as we are brand new but i've been reaching out to people all up and down the east coast um trying to you know, figure things out like, hey, could we come investigate? How much would it cost? That kind of thing. So yeah, got a lot of got a lot of plans in the works, but we're we're terribly excited. So yeah, that's awesome. I mean, it's it's it can be a real challenge to find a team that um, you connect with, and I mean, because you know you're going into these different lo locations and putting yourself in some uncomfortable situations. So um, so kudos to you for for putting a great team together and. Uh, uh, I look forward to, um, to to watching where you guys go. Do you all uh, put a lot of your investigations that you do out somewhere? Um, what's the best place if people want to follow you? Do you, do you have a YouTube channel? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Um, I, I'm working on that. <laughs> it's, in the, yeah. it's in the pipeline. So primarily anything right now would be going up on our Facebook page. Okay. Um, yeah. Videos, audio, all that fun stuff. Awesome. Awesome. Yep. What are your, uh, what are your favorite places to investigate? Cause I know Virginia Ooh. has, it has so much history. There's so many great places and it's, and it's an old history. So uh, I always yeah. love to ask people what their favorite type of places are to investigate. Um, I definitely love old jails. Um, been investigating quite a few of those here recently. <laughs> um, 
and, and it never fails. I always meet the most interesting characters uh, lurking around. Uh, to be expected, I guess. Yeah. Um, sanit <laughs> sanitariums are always fun, too. Um, love sanitariums. And then churches. Um, yes. Those would be my top three. Yeah. Um, you know, lots of history there. And, you know, there are, you know, certain imprints that can still be felt on those landscapes um, that makes a, an even more interesting investigation. Absolutely. I love doing churches and that's something that uh, that's something that I could do all the time. And it just doesn't seem like mm -hmm. there's a lot of them that you can always get into. But um, I love those. Uh, Dr. Sumner says the Exchange Hotel in Gordonsville, Virginia is amazing. Uh, yeah. I've not investigated that one. Have you investigated that one yet? No, um, that is uh, one that's high up on my list that I'm trying to um, put together an excursion for actually as we speak. So very yeah, cool. hoping to do that um, at some point. Very cool. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead. I know you've shared a lot of different pictures with me, so mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and pull some of those up. Um, do you have any suggestions on where you want to start or do you want me to just pull up and you kind of talk about them? Oh, you can just hold up and I'll talk about them. Sure. Okay, cool. Let me go ahead and I'm going to start with the last ones that you sent me tonight where you were talking about okay. uh, a gr having a great story with them. Uh, yeah. Let's see if I can get this. So I'll, I'll just go ahead and start talking about it. Um, I So with the original ghost tour um, that I work for, I, I primarily do two of their programs right now, which I did help create. Um, mm -hmm. the Beyond the Shadows of Williamsburg tour, and then the Extreme Ghost tour. Um, Beyond the Shadows of Williamsburg, it kind of dives into um, more darker history and, you know, real experiences that people have had in the historic area of Williamsburg. And this um, particular photo right here, so... This is a picture of um, Reverend W.A.R. Goodwin, who was director of Bruton Parish Church on um, two different times uh, during the, let's see, uh, what was it, 1914 to about 1923, and then uh, during the early 1930s, if memory serves. And he, um, he was a brilliant man. Um, he was a historian, he was a priest, uh, he was an author. I mean, you know, a, a guy I could easily relate to, but he, he, we affectionately called the father of Colonial Williamsburg because he took, you know, these ideas that people had for making Williamsburg look the way it did during the 18th century. And he kind of just pushed the envelope forward and rekindled friendships and made new friendships to raise enough money to make this place what it is today, the largest outdoor living history museum in the United States. Um, his church, Bruton Parish Church, so he's actually buried in the floorboards of his church. Oh, uh, wow. Was, yeah, um, so th I think that's totally cool. Um, yeah. He, he and about 41 other people actually, um, th going all the way back to the 17th century. Um, that was a that was a great great honor if you could be buried in your church like that. Now um, with Goodwin, here's where this gets kind of interesting. So one night I was um, this was back in May. I was uh, doing a Beyond the Shadows of Williamsburg tour, and I always end that tour at the church cemetery right in front of the gate. And um, on this tour, you know, guests um, can play with like a PSB7 spirit box and dowsing rods and K2 meters, you know, just to kind of get a little ghost ghost hunt uh, mm -hmm. in there somewhere. And, you know, I shook hands with everybody. And everybody's like, okay, hey, great, great, thanks. And, you know, they took off for the night. And here I am standing here and I'm looking around, and, you know, I've been sensitive to the paranormal from a very young age, obviously, but I could feel like somebody was watching. I could feel this present that I couldn't explain. So I turned around, looked at the gate. I didn't see mm -hmm. anything, but I felt it. And it was very, very low to the ground. So I took a step back. I said, hey, I'm not sure who's here. I appreciate you listening in. I hope you enjoyed the tour. Uh, I'm going to take a few photographs. Feel free to show up. And I just mm -hmm. stood there with my cell phone, used the flash. Boom, boom, boom. 
and I look down at my phone in the very first photo, uh, and that'll be the next photo. Um, wow. Right, to, right there in the middle, there was a dog looking back at me. And I was like, that's a dog. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm going to so see if I can make this full screen here. Yeah. Wow. Um, so the that specific dog breed is actually an American Eskimo. Um, I know this because my girlfriend and I used to have one. And so I was like, okay, there's no denying that. I was like, all right, why is there a dog, a, a ghost dog in the cemetery? Mm -hmm. That's what I have to know. Um, so I reached out to a buddy of mine uh, who used to do security for the foundation uh, for a few years. And he said, you know, Reverend Goodwin had a dog, right? And it's rumored that he and the dog are buried together in the church. I said, shut the front door. <laughs> no, <laughs> no way. And he said, yeah, hold on. You know, let me see if I can find the picture. Uh, that first picture I sent you, uh, he sent that to me. And I went, holy cow, that's the dog. Uh, yeah. So Rev yeah. Reverend Goodwin's dog was an American Eskimo named Alaska. Um, he and the dog were incredibly close. And after he died, um, they actually exhumed Whoops. the dog who had already passed on and buried it with him. Wow. And I went, that is so cool. Um, so whenever I'm, you know, doing a tour now at the end, you know, sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll stand there by myself and, um, you know, I'll turn on the spirit box or something. And I'll ask if Alaska is out there. And, you know, most nights they're like, no, no, you know, not tonight. Um, but every once in a while they'll say, yeah, he's barking. And I go, oh, wow, okay. And um, the, the spirits in that cemetery have confirmed that Reverend Goodwin and his dog Alaska take late night walks together like nothing's ever happened. Um, I think that's one of the coolest things in the world, you know, and it's, it's that is, and sweet. you can see it clear. Yeah. 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 It's, it's totally wild. So. Wow. Know, great catch. It. Yeah. Great catch. And, yeah. and gr I mean, great story. And I love hearing those stories of ones that just, I mean, they're just a uh, nothing, nothing malignant or anything like that. Just, mm -hmm. you know, just a, uh, just a good, sweet story, you know? Yeah, exactly. You know, and it's always fun to be able to connect to mm -hmm. the history. Um, you know, that like that picture just sells it. Absolutely. So we'll just kind of go through your different different ones. Mm -hmm. um, and you can kind of tell some of the different stories that uh, go along with them, if, if that's cool. Yeah. Um, so this one, short and sweet. Um, so there's this little area on the side of the Capitol building, um, which is all the way at the other end of the historic city, um, mm -hmm. where I start the Extreme Ghost Tour, um, which we do every Friday and Saturday night. Um, and that's actually a three hour ghost hunting tour. Um, nice. Where I actually, yeah, um, where I take guests around to several of the most reportedly haunted places in the city, give them a little bit of history, some of the spooky stuff that's happened um, without really tell, telling stories. And then we conduct many investigations at each of these sites. Very um, nice. Is, uh, yeah. is that the difference in the different tours that you do? That that one is like an actual ghost hunt versus um, mm -hmm. a storytelling tour? Okay. Yep, ex exactly. Um, now, this location on the side of the Capitol building, this is where I start my tours. Um, the Capitol building is where felony crimes were tried during the 18th century. Um, so there's a, a lot of history tied to this location. But this little area on the side of the building, I, I usually stop there to kind of um, ground myself and kind of get in the zone before I start this three-hour tour. And every single time I stop here just to ground and pray and get ready for the night, I always get activity starting before the tour. And I'm like, why me? <laughs> I guess they <laughs> like me that much. But... Um, so I just kind of make it a habit right before I do my thing now. Um, I'm like, hey, guys, it's Denny. You know, don't mind me. Uh, I'm going to take a few pictures and see who's hanging out with me. 
before I get ready for the tour tonight. And this was actually um, last weekend. And I just, I, I felt something there. So I took a couple of photos, um, like three of them in a row. And you start off by seeing this energy. It's like, boop, boom. And then in the third picture, there's something there. Um, what I see, and I've shown this to quite a few people, I see what looks like possibly a nun. Um, mm -hmm. you know, with the, the white habit on. It's got the long, um, yeah, the long habit. Yeah. And I mean, if you really zoom in on it and look, you can see what looks like the heads of two children looking up at her. They're very, very faint. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure what to make of it. I do know that during the Civil War, um, the, the building that was on that site was actually an all girls school. Uh, an academy, excuse me, let me use the correct ter terminology. Um, but I can't find any historical records of nuns having ever visited that school. But doesn't mean there's, a, you know, not another piece of history out there lurking around they haven't discovered yet. So that's yeah. true. Very mm -hmm. cool catch. Let's yeah. see. Whoops. <laughs> I don't know why this goes away. Um, I thought it would let me. <laughs> oh wow yeah um so i usually end the ghost hunting tour um at the public jail so uh -huh. the jail is where basically all of your um your felons would have been kept while they awaited sentencing um you know after their trial now mm -hmm. and that was kind of complicated because courts uh that, that court system they only met four times a year so it was like okay well I go to trial, but now I'm going to have to wait a few months in the public jail <laughs> until I can get my sentence. Great. Um, but yeah, the jail gets insanely active um, some nights. I mean, we're talking about a building that dates back to uh, 1704. Um, there's a lot of history here. It was actively used up until about 1780. Um, and it, again, you know, a colorful cast of characters you can easily find here at this old jail and every single time i stop here right as i'm about to end the investigation that's when things really get interesting you know the entire atmosphere changes and it seems like they kind of put an apb out on me and they all come out to talk um but this picture right here so it was a few weeks ago um i was doing a tour and I was seeing shadow figures all over the place um, mm -hmm. moving toward me and I could feel them too. And I leaned down to grab um, a REM pod off the ground and I felt somebody running toward me up the street and I looked up and I told the group, I said, hey, there's a tall shadowy figure of a man running toward me right now, take some photos, guarantee you something's gonna happen. I grabbed that REM pod, came up, the lady next to me took a couple of photos and as soon as I turned the REM pod off, she said, oh my God, you got to come look at this. And I, I went over and she showed me her phone. She said, okay, look, you're crystal clear in this photo. She swiped mm -hmm. the photo. You're crystal clear in this photo. Swipe to the next one. And then that one, I was completely blurry from head to toe. Now, you know, I'm sitting here trying to rationalize this point. Okay, maybe I moved, you know, just, just a smidge and I caused, you know, the, the night shot to glitch or something. Um, mm -hmm. But I mean, as you can clearly see, there's nothing else around me that's mm -hmm. affected. It's just me. Um, mm -hmm. And I've even zoomed, I've zoomed in on my face and everything. I mean, my eyes look like they're hollowed out. Um, so. I was going to say that doesn't even look like you. Yeah. I'm inclined <laughs> to think that the spirit that I felt and saw coming toward me probably went through me right <laughs> at that moment. Um, that is odd that nothing else is. It. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. I have to uh, be very careful when I go to this jail because they're very, um, how shall I put it? Hands on. <laughs> <I can see laughs> that. Yeah. They're a little, wow. they're a little touchy. Um, yeah. Uh, is it is interesting method, because yeah. oh go ahead oh i was just saying doing estes method there is 
absolutely mind boggling because, you know, with me, they take advantage of the fact that I'm sensitive and, you know, they'll come up and they'll tap me on my shoulders and they'll stomp their feet behind me just to, you know, rattle my nerves and I can't see them or hear anything else going on. Um, so, yeah. So I do you have a lot of good luck guess. with this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it, it really depends on the location, but um, in Williamsburg, the, the public jail, and then the Peyton Randolph house, um, those seem to be the best two locations. The Peyton Randolph house gets kind of wild. Um, normally we pick up the, the spirit children um, who dwell in that house. Very cool. And, and you were about to say before I interrupted you, the, um, you were saying the, do you typically let the guests uh, um, do, do Estes with you on the, on the tour? Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, I try to make it their investigation, you know, I'm like, Hey, look, I do this all the time. I'm here to teach you, you know, ask me questions, you know? Um, but I try to let them do it at all costs. And if they're too afraid to do it, then I say, okay, look, I'll blindfold myself, you know, I'll put on the headset, I'll talk to them. You just ask me questions or ask them questions and I'll tell you what they say. Um, yeah, we actually, um, Monday, this past Monday night, we did a, a live stream ghost hunt uh, from the Peyton Randolph house. And I did Estes method and we actually had uh, three spirits, um, two little girls and an older male and the male was trying to convince me to stop doing the Estes method. He was like, go, get out. And the girls were like, no, 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 he, he's our friend. He's our friend. And I was just like, I, you know, here I am, the sitting duck caught in this argument. Um, so I was like, all right, he wants me to go. I'm going to go. I'll come back and talk to you girls later. So, yeah. Wow. Uh, How yeah. cool. Wow. Yeah. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Okay, what's the story oh, that's on this the location? Jail. Oh, that's, yeah, the, that's jail. the jail. That's the jail. Yep. Okay. Yep, that's the uh, more specifically that's the jail house. That um, that's one of my favorite houses. That's the Palmer House or um, the John Palmer House, uh, which is named for a prominent attorney that lived there. Um, started off in 1749. The house is an original 18th century structure. Um, we do know it dates back to 1718. A um, lot of history tied here. One of my favorite things to talk about with this house, um, Williamsburg actually took part in the Civil War. Um, unfortunately, a lot of this history gets swept under the rug and it aggravates me so much. Uh, this house, um, after the Battle of Williamsburg in May of 1862, was used as headquarters for the Union Army. Now, here's what's interesting. We do know before the battle, the house was actually used as headquarters for the Confederate Army as well. Um, so you have both uh, these <laughs> occupying forces here. But um, there's a tragic piece of history tied to this house. We do know October of 1863, there was a 19 year old kid who was a first lieutenant from New York named William Wilkins Dissisway, who was made Federal Provost Marshal of Williamsburg. He came out onto the steps of that house one morning and got into an altercation with one of his own men who was drunk. Um, his man shot him in the face point blank and killed him on wow. the steps of the house. Yeah. And he's just one of the many spirits that are still there right now. And people have encountered him time after time after time again. Um, and, you know, everybody who experiences this is like okay what's making him come back um and that's the question any good investigator should try to answer have you found any type of uh answer to that question so he does we've made contact with him um on my extreme tour quite a few times um he responds really well with dowsing rods um uh, which i think is kind of interesting you forget spirit box and all that stuff. Dowsing rods seem to be his forte. Um, he's actually told us that the reason why he's come back is he's trying to make contact with somebody else. Oh. And that, yeah. Um, so I, I actually went digging into um, the little bit of history that's available on him. I found out he was actually courting a young woman who lived over in Yorktown, Virginia. 
uh, named Susanna. And supposedly the two of them were going to be married, but he got shot and it never happened. Um, so I think he's definitely got some unfinished business going on. Yeah, definitely a, a good reason to uh, come back and a good person or good reason to uh, be looking for a specific person for sure. Um, yeah. Now, is that location open for uh, people to um, rent out for private investigations or is it more for the tours? No. Um, so this house actually is a private residence. Um, Colonial oh. Williamsburg rents out um, a lot of these places for their employees. So this particular one is a private residence. Um, people actually do live here right now. Um, but the foundation is, you know, kind enough to say, you know, all right, it's all right if you're out on the street, the street's public, mm -hmm. just don't come up on somebody else's property. Sure, yeah. sure. And uh, have you talked to any of the people that's living there now if they've, uh, if they're experiencing activity? Um, so the people that live there now, uh, they're totally awesome, but they've given me a couple of interesting stories. So apparently they say there's this pr constant presence around the front door and they always feel like <laughs> From the outside of the house somebody's desperately trying to get in they'll hear knocking on the door the doorknob rattles the door will even open up and they go to the door to see who it is and there's nobody there and then from the inside of the house the door will just open up at random to reveal an empty staircase outside <laughs> um and they you know they felt like significant temperature changes um the lights always flicker around the door so they they definitely know something is going on at that house. What exactly? They don't know. But yeah, um, a buddy of mine actually um, lived there a few years back. And he said, as soon as he moved in, he asked the lady in the real estate office, you know, is this house on it? She said, I don't know. You'll have to find out for yourself. And he <laughs> said the first night, he and his wife were lying in bed and he heard, Hello? Hello. And he was like, oh my gosh, it's a ghost. It's a ghost. You know, he got up, grabbed a baseball bat, went out into the hallway, flipped on the light where he heard the sound coming from, and it was his cat sitting at the top of the stairs and meowing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I can, I mean, sometimes their meows actually sound like, because my cat will. He likes to ring the bells going down to um, my house is split level. And so okay. on um, on the entryway there in the front, I have these bells on the door in case someone tries to come in. And he's learned he can stand up on his hind legs. And he's also a polydactyl cat. So he's got the thumbs. Oh, cool. And so he'll stand up and grab the bell and shake it. And uh, so I call it ringing the freedom bells. And so he'll ring these bells and then he'll say out, out. And it sounds just like he's talking, so I, I can completely understand. <laughs> well, now that's an interesting looking yeah. house. Yeah. Um. So this is a um. This is a separate building that's actually attached to another building. Um. This is the Mary Dickinson shop. Now, this was actually um an active retail store used by Colonial Williamsburg for many many years. Um, but a few years ago, they decided to close its doors, um, mm. unfortunately, much to many people's chagrin. But um, we do know in 1770, a businesswoman by the name of Mary Dickinson moved into the shop and ran a very successful um, business up until about 1776. And she, um, she sold her wares in different parts of the city, and she even opened up another shop in Annapolis, Maryland. This building, though, for whatever reason, is haunted by children. And, mm. you know, history chose not to tell us a whole lot about Mistress Dickinson, um, but she never married. She never had kids, as far as we know. And there's no history that suggests that children have died in this building. Um, but thankfully, I know um, a small handful of sales uh, interpreters who have worked in there when it was an active store. And they were like, oh my gosh, many weird things happen all the time. You know, inventory would fall off the shelves. Um, you know, light bulbs would flicker. Doors would open and close on their own. They would hear voices calling out to them when there's wow. nobody else around. Um, they said it was a very, very active place. Um, 
actually, uh, one of my friends said one day she came in to open the place up and she saw what looked like these oily footprints, like somebody had stepped in tar or something and they were going all through the store into the back room. And she's like, uh, okay. So she followed the, the trail footprints. Um, they went to the back room all the way up the staircase to the second floor where the stock room was. And she wow. said they continued on a little ways and then they stopped at this um, connecting hallway that joined the shop to the house next door. You could literally step right into the house next door. And she hmm. said it seemed like to her that, you know, the, the, the children came down to play and then suddenly got called home by mom. Okay. Um, because these, these, they were, they were very tiny. Um, and they clearly indicated to her that they belong to children. So yeah, Very cool. kind of, uh, yeah, spooky stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes to me, children are spookier than, um, uh, than some of the other spirits we encounter. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, um, the, so this is actually outside of the group parish. Uh, cemetery that I was talking about with Reverend Goodwin and his dog. Um, the spirits there are very, very sociable. Um, most of them, they call me friend, which I, I'm very, very flattered. Um, but one night I was um, sensing that there was a little boy there with me. And mm -hmm. I, I turned on the spirit box and I was asking about one particular boy that I know is buried in the cemetery named Matthew Whaley. Um, his story is one of the oldest legends in the city of Williamsburg. Uh, he dies tragically at nine years old from pneumonia in the early 1700s. And he's buried in the cemetery on uh, in, in the same tomb as his father, um, because they believe in the 18th century, if you buried a child with the parent on top of them, that the parent could guide them in the afterlife, which I think was pretty sweet. Um, mm -hmm. But lots of people have reportedly seen his spirit over the years running and playing outside the cemetery, playing on the, uh, what's called the palace green right across the, the way from it. Uh, and there's even uh, a Matthew Bailey elementary school around the corner um, on uh, just off Prince George street. And they even say at the school, his presence uh, is felt there also. And I was talking um, with him through the spirit box one night and I asked if I could take his photo. And he said, okay, and I felt the, the energy like as he ran past. So I stepped back, I took a couple of photos and I believe that's him that popped up uh, right as he ran past me. That's very cool. So do they seem to, mm -hmm. uh, so they seem like they, uh, the spirits there at Williamsburg like interacting with the folks on the tour? Yeah, I'm a good chunk of them. And now, don't get me wrong, I come across the occasional um, grumpy old person. <laughs> That's the best way I can put it. Um, you know, some of them are like, eh, no, go away. You know, but, um, I, I'll get the occasional go to hell or die. <laughs> you know, I'm like, no, no, not doing that for a while. Sorry. <laughs> um, so I try, I try to tell people because it freaks them out. I'm like, you know, it, just like if they were alive, we would be respectful of their feelings. If they don't want to talk to us, that's fine. We just say thank you and we move on. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah. I can understand that. Let's see here, Let's see what else we got. Oh no, that's cool. Yeah, um, so one night I, I was finishing up the extreme tour. I believe this one was from back in June. And um, I walked out in front of the Capitol building and, you know, told, told the group to have a good night and everything. And I didn't bother to tell them, but as we um, came up the hill from the jail, I felt uh, somebody following us. Mm. And I, you know, I'm always hesitant with telling groups these kinds of things because I don't <laughs> want to freak them out. And it's like, okay, hey, the last thing you want to know is you did a ghost tour and one follows you home, right? Um, <laughs> So I waited until they all left and I said, you know, look, I don't know who you are. I don't know what you want, but I hope you enjoyed the tour. Um, I can feel you standing right here behind me. So if you don't mind, I'd like to take your photograph. 
And mm -hmm. I feel like something told me it was okay. So I stepped back and I kid you not with the first photo, that's what I got. Um, wow. Right there. Yeah. And I've showed this to a couple of people. Um, the general consensus I get is that this is a man from the 1930s. Um, I've had a couple of people who are um, mediums who have said that they pick up that he was probably part of the restoration of the historic area. And he literally hopped on my tour to <laughs> just kind of uh, reminisce a little bit and hear some of the history that, you know, he was probably involved in. So yeah, wow, kind of so cool. So is that, um, are those just homes or are those uh, part of like homes and shops? Yeah, um, so the the historic area here is, it, it's a good mixture of historic trade shops that you can actually visit, um, historic homes that you can go in and take tours of, private residences that employees live in, and then uh, shops and also taverns as well. Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, that is the uh, courthouse of 1770. Um, that's an original building. Um, that is where your misdemeanor crimes would have been tried during the time period. Um, also, civil cases would have been heard here as well. Um, uh, they've been dealing with runaway slaves and things like that. Now, a fun fact I always point out to guests um, at this location, the courthouse here was actually used as a morgue and a field hospital after the Battle of Williamsburg in 1862. Um, mm. without, without getting into the whole story, um, the front part was actually used as the morgue. Uh, we do know the back part of the building was used as a field hospital. Um, I've read several accounts from women who were living there during the occupation describing the uh, piles of human limbs that they could see in the windows uh, as they walk past uh, coming to and fro uh, in wow. front of that building. Uh, yeah, yeah. And there are a lot of reports of like hearing um, the moans and groans of men inside the building late at night and people seeing weird light anomalies and faces in the window. Um, I, I actually, I, I should go and see if I got the photo still. Um, I had a guest who captured on um, one of my tours a photograph of a guy in what looked like a white linen shirt um, and a window on the side here of the building, and he had blood all over his shirt. And oh, I no see, way. I, yeah, I have never seen a photograph like that in my life of a spirit. Um, but it was really, really interesting. I, I couldn't help but think he's probably a, a soldier, or, you know, from the mm -hmm. war between the states um, who died here in this building. So yeah, there's um, there's quite a bit of activity there. I have investigated it by myself numerous times. Um, you know, I've been inside the building and outside the building. It seems to be residual for the most part, mm. um, you know, at least in my experiences. But they do um, give you clear evidence that they they are there, undoubtedly. So as far as a lot of in, and you bring up a good point with the uh, residual and intelligent. As far as mm -hmm. what you've captured and a lot of the stuff that people on your tours have captured, um, does the majority seem to be residual or is it pretty, pretty split down the middle? I think it's pretty split down the middle, honestly. Um, and at the end of the night, it all depends on the location. Um, because, the, you know, the, I've been doing this so long, you know, I go, okay, if this lo location's dead, then let me try this location up the street and see how they're feeling. Um, <laughs> and, and it's interesting because like, uh, I'll use Weatherburn's Tavern, for example, some nights that, you know, that place is just residual activity and then you'll go a straight week and it's all of a sudden intelligent activity. And then you're going, how does that even work? Um, yeah, I don't know. Williamsburg, it, it very much has an energy to it that, it deserves to be felt and talked about and remembered. Um, and yeah. Yeah. That's all I can say. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and Ronnie brings up a good point. Uh, I've been to historic Williamsburg, but I was young. I think I was probably 
I was in my teens when I went and that's definitely somewhere that I want to go back to. And uh, I want to spend a couple days there just doing the daytime stuff, but I would love to take um, one of your tours and, uh, and, yeah. and do some of the, the ghost hunting and hear some of the ghost stories. That's always my favorite part of the historical stuff anyways. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I highly recommend it. Um, just let me know. I can hook you up anytime. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Cause I, yeah. I remember going there as a kid and I had so much fun, but, um, it's, it's definitely been one that's been a bucket list that I've wanted to go back to now that, now that I am paranormal investigating and such. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, it's very much worth it. I mean, between, you know, Lamesburg, Yorktown and Jamestown, which are all pretty much smacked, uh, up against one another. Yeah. There's, there's a lot there. There's a lot there. Um, this picture, though, uh, is an obelisk that's in um, Bruton Parish Church Cemetery. Um, in case you can't tell, that's another one of my favorite places. <laughs> um, <laughs> Bruton Parish Church, this obelisk um, is actually a grave marker for Judge Nathaniel Beverly Tucker and his wife Lucy. And um, cool fact about Judge Tucker, he was actually friends with Edgar Allan Poe. Um, mm. a, lot of people, a lot of people don't know that, but his obelisk was actually struck by lightning during the 1940s, and the very next day, faces showed up on it, and no one <laughs> has been able to explain what's caused this. They've done chemical tests on it, I mean, all sorts of different things, and they still can't come up with a logical explanation for why lightning caused these faces. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah. It really is, and it's it's very much uh, spooky. Um, yes, <laughs> love to photograph it. <laughs> I know anybody ever caught anybody anything cool it. with it? Um, so one night, um, there was a woman who was standing there taking photographs of it, and she caught what looked like a lady in black with blonde hair standing just behind the obelisk. And she came over to me, and she was like, "Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Who is that?" And I said. I bet you that's Lucy Tucker because legend has it that from time to time, while people are standing there gawking at her, her grave marker, she'll pop up and look out at everyone going, what are you looking at? <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I'd probably do that too if I were her. Like, all right, all right, get out of here. <laughs> Oh, that's, um, so I, I investigated up at um, Fleetwood Church in mm -hmm. Brandy Station, Virginia, um, back in April. Um, they had an event for frontline workers, which I got to partake in. And um, in Culpeper, um, they had a really beautiful um, historic cemetery. And I, after the investigation, um, you know, the next, when it was over the next day, I just went and walked around and investigated in the cemetery and just kind of spent time talking with uh, Civil War soldiers and hearing their stories and, you know, getting to know them a little bit and seeing if there was anything I could do to help them. Yeah, so very cool. That, that is very cool. Did, um, did you get any cool responses? Yeah, um, I, I made contact with a few different um, Confederate soldiers who were able to you know, give me their um, the regiments that they were part of, and you know their um, their leaders' names and everything. And it was it was it was very cool, very cool stuff. And I actually turned around and uh, ver verified all that um, through historical. Very records. nice. Yeah. What's uh, what's your favorite tool when you're doing that? Uh, when you're just out in the cemetery, just kind of doing just a sort of a not really solo investigating, but just more of just to kind of sit and talk sort of thing. What's your favorite type of tool to use? Um, that would be a toss up between dowsing rods and my PSP7 spare box. Nice. I love the rods. Yeah, yeah uh, 100%. Because I mean, the rods can tell you so much, you know, especially being in a cemetery. I mean, there's just so much, um, you know, real energy. Mm -hmm. that's there that you can't feel, you know, at a lot of locations. Um, and I find that I get 
you know, some of my best readings with dowsing rods at, at, at a cemetery. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I did. Yeah. It. Yeah. I and spirit it. boxes, <laughs> spirit box is great yeah. too, but I, I have to definitely agree with you that on those, on the rods, especially in a cemetery. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and there you are using your rods. Just, yeah. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> I'll do a, a big shout out um, to my friend, Cecily, uh, who runs a, um, a dowsing rod business. Um, she makes uh, dowsing rods um, from copper. Um, she has all these cool accessories to them and everything. Um, that's a pair of rods that I bought off of her um, at Fleetwood Paracon, which was held at Fleetwood Church last September. And um, I was using them at a, uh, uh, prior resonance that I was investigating, little solo work I was doing, and um, I felt like I saw the shadow on the wall, and I asked, I asked the uh, the property owner, I said, "Could you take a photo of me really quick? I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm not arrogant, but I feel like this would make a good photo." And uh, she said, "Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, by all means, by all means." Yeah, she was more than happy to. Oh, very cool. Let's see. Yeah. Make sure I've not missed any um let's see here oh let's see we've got a video i'll have to share that one separate i think here in just a minute okay that um so back at the beginning of july uh july 10th i went and investigated uh with another team east coast uh spirit chasers um I'll say hi to my friend maggie in case she's watching um we investigated the uh, Fakir um, History Museum at the old jail. And um, this room right here, uh, if I remember correctly, um, was the um, the medical department. Um, we actually got a lot of insane activity in this room. I mean, between EVPs and getting them interacting with the, the REM pods and talking to us through the spirit box. I mean, I just felt like that room was just swarming um, with activity. Uh, the jail, uh, <laughs> I, I definitely want to go back, but I, I went out into the hanging yard um, at one point and uh, my friend Maggie was running a SLS and I kept feeling this energy um, over in the spot where they used to have the gallows. So I went out into the yard by myself and I stepped onto the very area where the gallows was. And I, you know, I just kind of felt that energy. And then I felt something come and grab me on the back of the neck. It was like, I kid you not, it was like something slipped a noose around my neck. Wow. And I, and I told her and the other investigators, I said, you know, guys, uh, put that SLS on me because I'm pretty sure something's got a hold of me. And they put it on me. And I kid you not, they, they showed it to me later there was uh, an entity leaning over my shoulders with their hands around my neck. And I, I got down on the ground to get away from it. And it came right down onto the ground with me. And it, it, and it even got worse, the pressure around my neck. And I said, guys, I'm gonna say, like, I got to do something. So I, I closed my eyes. I said a really fast prayer. And I felt the pressure release. And they were like, Denny, I don't know what you did, but it's gone. And um, yeah, so we got back inside and they, you know, made me pull up my hair and they looked at my neck and the back of my neck was completely red. Uh, wow. Whatever, yeah, whatever got me, I mean, it, it got me good. Um, that's that's scary. It, it was scary. It was scary. Yeah. And um, they had a guy on their team who's a, a sensitive and he said that, he saw what looked like um, a, like a guy in his 20s dressed in a guard's uniform um, leaning over me with a noose. And wow. I just said, uh, okay, well, you know, that kind of goes with what I was feeling because I felt a very mm -hmm. dominating presence with what felt like a rope being fitted around my neck. So, yeah, spooky, spooky stuff. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I was going to say that that actually kind of sounds like a guard more so than than another prisoner. Yeah, probably took one look at me, the long hair and the beard. And he said, <laughs> yeah, that, he's got to go. <laughs> he's up to no good. <laughs> yeah, yeah.
probably thought I was a pirate. I mean, it happened. <laughs> Oh, uh, let's see. All right. This photo, uh, another uh, Bruton Parish Church photo. Um, one night I, I finished the tour and I felt them watching me and I just went, hey, guys. Um, I started snapping a couple of photos. And in that photo, when I went and looked, um, there's some kind of weird uh, cryptid of some sort. I don't know if it's like a dog or what, um, but I have no explanation for it. He's like right there in the corner. And then, like, kind of on in the other um, the other window there, there's kind of what looks like yeah, there's a there's a profile of a boy looking out at me. Um, and I believe that's the same boy Matthew that I had in the other photo that I was talking about um, because he seems to be always there. I've actually talked to his dad um, through Spirit Box. Um, his dad's a really polite uh down to earth spirit i mean he will sit there answer all your questions he'll you know he'll say yes sir no sir i mean i tell him hey don't don't be so formal you know let's talk as <laughs> friends <laughs> but yeah, i love yeah. that let's see mm -hmm. that's another photo from the church uh one night i was literally walking down the sidewalk and i felt eyeballs watching me from the window and I went back and looked after I took the photo and there was a giant eyeball staring out the window at me um yeah I mean it's like right there in inside that yeah. green circle yeah. there's wow there's a giant eye <laughs> I mean <laughs> yeah um it's it's interesting it's certainly interesting so I mean I kind of let my my intuition you know guide me uh for the most part when i'm taking photos like this but they they have no problem showing up yeah i mean sometimes you just um i mean if you fail to take a picture it's best to just ask you know if if um they don't mind showing themselves and snapping that picture because mm -hmm. usually if you listen to your gut i mean if there's something there if you're if you feel it in your gut usually there is yeah um actually this shot was in the uh the same night um in the window right next to it believe it or not and uh so uh, i have what looks like a a cat uh, up in the top window pane there um to me it looks like a lion cub and yeah. then in the in the bottom there uh what looks like to me an 18th century male whose gaze is kind of veering off toward the left, like he's a little camera shy or something that doesn't want to necessarily be seen. Um, who he is? I have no idea. Um, I, I do have a theory with a line cub, though. So in the 60s, um, there was a guy in Williamsburg who actually had a lion. And long story short, he gave it away, and then he went to the zoo and then brought it back. And um, the lion actually ended up mauling him to death and escaping, and the cops had to kill it. Um, but supposedly this guy went to Bruton Parish Church. So it's it's a long shot um, in terms of trying <laughs> to connect the dots. But I'm like, okay, maybe that's little Simba. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I have no other ideas. That's not really a common story you hear <laughs> about, yeah. you know, people having, you know, uh, some type of exotic animal. So, I mean, that's as, as yeah. good of a connection or theory as any. I mean, it's actually yeah. <laughs> actually pretty, uh, pretty kind of sp spot on, you know. Um, right. Yeah. I just wanted to um, um, address Ronnie's comment right quick. Um because I know they they're there in uh, Virginia as well. Um, thank you, thank you for your great comment, uh, Ronnie. And I hope you have a great night as well. And we will definitely see you see you in April. And uh, hopefully, hopefully, yeah, you and DC's team will uh, will cross paths at some point. Um, oh, I'm sure, absolutely. I investigated with Ronnie's team at uh, my first time at St. Albans, and uh, very knowledgeable, great investigators. Awesome. Let me make sure I've. Good stuff. Let me make sure I've not missed anything. 
I try, I try not to overload you. I mean, I no, I, I appreciate it. <laughs> I appreciate it. Yeah, we're we're actually just right on time here because where we had oh, okay. the technical difficulty earlier. Yeah. Um, we'll make up for that time now. But I believe this is the last one here. Let me get this yeah, set so um, I can so zoom in. All that action is going on right in that window pane. <laughs> this one. Um, yeah. So I was. Um, having a conversation with uh, a spirit who called himself Reverend Avery um, through PSB7 Spirit Box one night after I finished a tour. And he sounded like he was very angry. And I, you know, I kept, you not necessarily poking at him, but I kept kind of prodding like, okay, what's going on? You know, I can, I, I feel your emotions, you know, just talk to me. And he said that um, basically there were some, unscrupulous characters at the church that night and he was trying to deal with them and i said oh well you know i'm i'm sorry to hear that how about i i let you deal with that and if you don't mind i'm going to take a couple of photos he said yeah yeah okay and kind of like i heard the angst in his voice so i said all right <laughs> and did that and i snapped a photo and i kid you not it's like there's the profile of what looks like a reverend with glasses on with his fingers up in the air and he's like he's pointing at this large face of another entity um so i'm guessing reverend avery was having at it with the the spirits in that church so i don't know i don't know but it's uh it's an interesting photo that it, it really is it really is i mean yeah. that you can definitely see the profile and uh and the hand mm -hmm, wow mm -hmm. Well, these yeah. are great, great catches and great stories, DC. I, like I said, I, I'm glad you were able to be, to get on, and uh, I appreciate you taking the time to to share some of these with us because, I mean, you know, I just I love listening to your stories, you know, and in your podcast and your stories. That's because for from what I do, um, the storytelling is one of my favorite things, and so uh, yeah. I can really appreciate Absolutely. that. And uh, appreciate you taking the time to share all of this with us. Oh, sure. It's been absolutely my pleasure. And if anybody uh, is ever interested in coming to Williamsburg, um, by all means, you know, reach out. Um, I work with the Original Ghost Tour. Um, you can go to the Original go uh, excuse me, the Ghost Tour dot com, um, and you know that'll tell you all about us, what tours we offer. And again, I do the um, Beyond the Shadows of Williamsburg tour, and then the Extreme for awesome and uh go ahead and plug um plug where people can find you and uh listen to your podcast and i've got a lot of that in the show um, notes but go ahead and plug that for us yeah by all means so um with the podcast um you can go to i, I have a link tree set up for the show um l-i-n-k-t-r period e, e backslash hauntingly yours paranormal um you can find it on all the big platforms, um, you know, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Pandora, all that good stuff. And um, I'm on um, Facebook. Um, you can find Hauntly Yours podcast for the paranormal. There's the Hauntly Yours uh, Facebook group. Um, yeah, uh, also on Instagram, TikTok. Uh, gosh, what else am I missing? <laughs> I think <laughs> and Twitter. Uh, yeah, I think I got all the bases covered. Awesome. Yeah, definitely. You guys need to go check that out. Like, subscribe, follow. Um, you'll be glad you did because his his shows are always very interesting and he gets some great guests on there as well. So um, and, you know, I appreciate you letting, you know, I, I know I always share our show on um, on your your group page. And so I always appreciate you being gracious enough to um, share our stuff and uh, help us spread the word on that. So so thank you for that. Oh, yeah, no, uh, my pleasure. You know, one of my big goals with this group is to, you know, create more of a, a community and, you know, unite many different facets of the, the paranormal field from investigation teams to podcasters, you know, to solo investigators, authors, you know, and to have us all in one place so we can kind of lift each other up and, you know, promote, promote what we do. So 
My pleasure. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Anytime. And uh, and again, thank you for coming on tonight. Thank you all in the chat room who uh, bared with us in the beginning through the technical difficulty and also. <laughs> yes. uh, thank you, guys. <laughs> posted. Uh, I, I told you you would want to stick around because uh, uh, he ha he has some great stories. So, um, so again, thank you all so much for your comments, your questions, and um, be on the lookout. Like I said, next week, uh, next Thursday, I have author Sin Dixon. Um, she was going to be on a few weeks ago, but I was traveling and we had to postpone that show. So she's going to be on then. And then we'll also be having some other announcements about um, different events that are coming up. Las Cruces Paracon, uh, the Harley Davidson event in October on Halloween. All of those great things. We're going to have more information about those coming up. So again, thank you all. And I hope you have a great night.